Which four artists or figures would make up, if one were to ever exist in a future far, far away, a Vaporwave Mount Rushmore? A mountain commemorating the four most important people from the Vaporwave scene, four legendary heroes chiseled into the finest marble by Helios himself. This is a question I recently posted on Twitter and got a ton of different responses. Today, I want to showcase who I would choose as the four faces of the scene and why. I think we can all agree there are a couple obvious picks, you know, incredibly important figures who have really had such an impact on the scene, past and present, so many of you will have some of my picks as well. However, I think you're going to be pretty surprised at who I have last up, so make sure you stick around for the entire video, and let me know in the comments below who your four would be if you had to construct this mountain of vapor gods. First up. I'm just gonna drop the hammer, alright, and say who I think is the most important figure in the entire history of this scene, and I'm sure many of you will agree with me on this. Yep, the one, the only, good old Georgie boy, Mr. Clinton. I really don't need to explain much here, but just to refresh your noggin, George is easily one of the hardest working, undeniably trendsetting, and most consistent people to ever come out of the vaporwave scene. With arguably the most successful and beloved record label in 100% Electronica, creating and being involved in a number of diverse musical projects, or being the first person to truly bring the URL to IRL by throwing the first ever Vaporwave Festival to massive success, George has done so much for us over the years, and at this point it always feels like tomorrow he's just gonna drop another insane announcement for us. Whether it's his vocals and the Mirror Kisses Pop Project, Heavy Aesthetics and Vaporwave Essentials as Esprit, Esprit, I still, someone let me know, it, it, how do you say it? Or just being George Clanton himself and creating Anthony Fantano worthy music pieces or working with Nick Hexum of 311, George is one of the most successful people coming out of this community and is still so heavily invested in his Vaporwave roots. He really has something for everyone and is always the perfect artist in my opinion to introduce any newcomer to the Vaporwave scene. I remember a couple years ago I brought my best friend to a George Clanton concert and this friend had no idea who George Clanton was or what Vaporwave was for that matter and it's safe to say that he has become a pretty vivid 100% Electronica fan ever since that day. George's consistency as someone who is always willing to try new things while making even his most die-hard OG fans happy is something I truly look up to and I know he'll be making some magic for us for many, many years to come. George and I have a lot in common. I know we're both workaholics so I really do resonate with the man and it is hard to not put him as the most influential and important person in the 10 years so far, I guess, of Vaporwave's history. Next up. Another one I think many of you would also put up here, I'm going with the golden boy, St. Pepsi. St. Pepsi, Skylar Spence, or as I like to call him, Big Ryan from Brooklyn, has to have the most classics to ever come out of one single artist in the vaporwave scene alone. Seriously, really think about it for a second. This dude has so many albums and tracks that people find to be sacred in the scene that like, nobody even comes close to the impact he has had. Just off the top of my head, you got Hip Vibes, Late Night Delight, Empire Building, World Tour, and don't even get me started on how many individual songs I think many of us can agree are all-time favorites and all-time classics. Like George, Ryan has made some pretty dynamic moves in his musical career, especially given the fact that by like 2014, he was already a legend and universal fan favorite in the scene, and many people, if they were in that situation I feel, especially with all the you know popularity he was getting, they would keep milking that vibe and that same success. But in 2015, St. Pepsi totally changed things up by releasing Prom King under the name Skylar Spence. What many would be scared to do as an artist ended up being an incredibly fun escape from the vaporwave norms we got used to with St. Pepsi. Prom King was vibrant, confident, and full of color with another handful of memorable tracks coming out of this nostalgic yet refreshing dance pop joyride. It was beautiful. I love Prom King. We did see an absence of Ryan in the years following Prom King. However, in recent times, he has been back in absolute full swing, headlining Electronicon, releasing arguably his best produced St. Pepsi album yet in Mannequin Challenge, and even doing a ton of live shows and touring. I'm able to say that Ryan is a good friend of mine. Being able to work on music with him on my album Dewdropper was absolutely incredible. Watching this man get into the zone and chopping up a sample I thought couldn't be chopped up anymore. One of the nicest people in the scene. The dude is a true teddy bear. I don't know where we'd all be without the silky yet dusty tunes of St. Pepsi. 
I've also done an interview with Ryan, or St. Pepsi, whatever you want to call him at this point, discussing his beginnings and discography. It was a ton of fun, so if you haven't checked that out, I'm going to leave a link to that video in the description below. Before we continue on, make sure you drop a like on this video if you, you know, like it. <laughs> it helps out the channel a lot. And click that subscribe button, hit the little bell, so you never miss a future video. Third up, now, okay, so the third spot here, this was a really tough one for me. I wish I could pick five people for this list, but in true Mount Rushmore fashion, I gotta stay true to the game, baby. I gotta keep it precise, I can only pick four. So, I'll be absolutely honest with you, I was split between two people for this, this spot you know, to include on this list. Two people who have had such an impact on the scene, and it's so hard to leave one out, but I gotta do it. So I was split between Telepath and Cat System Corp. And although Jorn, if you're watching this, you know I love you, buddy. I love you, you son of a bitch. And just like everyone else can agree upon, there are so many reasons why you could be on this dang mountain. But look, there's just, just throughout the entire time we've been doing this thing called Vaporwave, there is just this undeniable mystique and fascination we all have with Telepath. I gotta give him the spot. I mean, just watch the videos of him performing at Electronicon. I know I can say, as someone who went to Econ 1 in New York City, absolutely everyone and their mother made sure they were on that damn roof to watch Telepath perform as the sun set behind the New York City skyline. And I, I can't even, you know... Can't forget to mention that stretch of albums he had from 2013 to 2015 that many would like die for. Telepath fans are straight up diehard fans. No one does it like Telly. With an unbelievable amount of classic releases and having a hand in many of collaborations with other big time Vaporwave artists, Cat System Corp included, the legacy of Telepath is without question such a focal point of discussion in the community. It is so much fun to just get lost in his hours and hours and hours of slushy, ambient, cosmic goodness. His music has so much replay value due to how lost you get into each album that sometimes, and I know this happens for me, I'll just I'll forget what the album sounds like when I return to it because one, he has so much, and two, they're all so expansive so that when you get back to them, it's like you're listening to it for the first time. Everyone has a different favorite of his. There is no set, this is the best album. And because of that alone, with a massive discography behind it, it's so hard to not give this spot to him. Put him on this Vaporwave Mount Rushmore. So Telepath, I'm throwing your uh, your face, I guess, on there. All right, last but not least, the fourth and final spot on the Vaporwave Mount Rushmore. No matter who I put, I know I'm gonna get, you know, totally blasted for not putting one person on there or this other person on there, but that's totally cool. I love that there are so many potential people for this spot. And like I said, let me know who you choose in the comments below. I wanna hear, you know, who you guys would think would be that for. Some of my honorable mentions would be Vectroid, Vito from the MT Tapes FL, Death Dynamic Shroud, James Ferraro, and Daniel Lopatin. But folks, my fourth and final pick for this list goes to the Vapor Goddess herself, Luxury Elite. Why? Why Luxury Elite? An artist who has pretty much been vacant from the scene for years now. Her last two albums coming out in 2016 and 2018, so a span of four years pretty much. I mean, I know 2020 just started, but still. Like, looking at the number 2020, it's so intimidating. I feel like we've been in this year already for so long. Well, there are two main reasons I give for this, why I'm putting her on this Mount Rushmore, and why I find her to have the most charming touch this scene has ever seen. First and foremost, Luxury Elite is, in my opinion, an artist I'll listen to whenever I really want to go back, that return to the old days of simple, cheap, fun vaporwave. And while her production may be super simple, especially compared to what we have seen today, she just gets it. She gets how powerful the simplicity of reverb and a charming sample flip alone can be. The fun in creating laid-back moods, her track set, and the themes she presents with her music, it's just this virtually romantic setting, and I absolutely love it world-class fantasy and new classics being some of my favorites. And also, obviously, she was one half of what could be one of the most important and beloved albums in the scene's history, Late Night Delight with St. Pepsi. And although her music is, you know, pretty solid for what it is, what really makes me give her this spot is that she managed what I believe to be is the most beautiful archive of Vaporwave releases ever. And now to Funk label that some of you may not know of, even though I wasn't into the Vaporwave scene, actually in 2013, going back to it, it holds some of the most legendary artists and albums to ever see the light of day in our scene, and I still travel on over there, you know, that abandoned band camp page from time to time to explore those classics that lay waiting for me. Yes, the legendary Fortune 500 label was ran by Luxury Elite herself, and what makes Fortune 500 so great? 
Let's take a look at some of the players on the roster here. You got Esprit, same Pepsi, Luxury Elite, obviously, Cat System Corp, Macross 8299, 18 Carat Affair, Golden Living Room, the list just goes on and on. This is such a beautiful collection of releases, releases that are pillars of the Vaporwave universe, releases that still stand the test of time and find a home in the hearts of many fans around the world. But who knows, maybe by like 2098 or something, Telepath's great grandkids will have released some insane Vaporwave music that we can't even fathom yet. So maybe by the time this thing gets built, there will be a whole new cast of people way more important than the ones I selected for this list. But I think that as of now, I'm pretty confident that I would give the spots to these four artists I mentioned today. And hopefully one day, we can all go on a trip to Mount Vaporwave. And real quick, if you want to help contribute to the channel and help me get that much closer to being Pat Chennington full-time, which is an absolute dream of mine, I'm going to leave a link to my Patreon page in the description below. You're going to get access to a bunch of cool rewards and benefits if you sign up. And if you don't, all good. You just watching this video alone, I feel the love from here, so don't even worry about it. But thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later, baby. Much love. Your boy, Pat Chennington.